is hymn number 21, Immortal Invisible. topic in the series of the parables. It is entitled The Unjust Steward. Shall we pray? Oh God, we thank you for what you continue to do for your children. And as we shall be digging into these stories, I ask, oh God, that you help us as your people to learn and apply what we have learned to make our lives better so that we can be fully prepared for your second coming. In Jesus' name we pray. The passage this evening that we will be looking at is Luke chapter 16. And uh, this chapter is running right after chapter 15. And in chapter 15, there is also a very interesting parable that will be highlighted as well in the parable in Luke chapter 16. The unjust steward. A steward is someone who is entrusted with a responsibility. A steward is someone who is assigned to handle the resources of an organization or a person. But this steward was employed to handle the resources of a rich man. The chapter did not say how this man acquired his riches, but we are told that he was very rich. Luke 16 is the parable about the unfaithful steward. This man must have received the proper training to be given such a powerful position. To be given such a position today, Rigorous interview is done, sometimes weeks or months before the prospective candidate is selected. selected. And so, based on the extent of his authority, it seemed that he was larger than life. He was a big shot, as we call them in our world. He was massive decision making was at the tip of his tongue. No one to be consulted. He was given full 
authority to manage these resources. But alas, there was a situation. There was a situation confronting him. And it is similar to what will confront us in our daily lives as Christians. A situation faced him. And so for the first time in his life, he was wondering what to do. He was wondering what to do. He was faced with a different set of circumstances. And this was made clear when he declared, I cannot dig, nor can I beg. Whenever one is in this position, reasoning will no longer guide, but arrogance will take over. And this will proceed a fall. And so this is the continuation of the fall of this manager. It had started before, and now he was confronted with a situation. And so to make a proper decision, he was troubled. And so when the rich man asked him, what is this I hear about you? He was astonished. So in the parable, Jesus did not say how the master found out about his mismanagement. But members, you and I must remember that he that covered his sin will not prosper. And that very soon those sins will find us out. Those sins will expose us. We may hide our sins for a time. But surely they will find us out. And so for years this steward was hiding his sins. And they were now brought to the focus. This must have been shocking to this manager. Since all of his life he was in charge of resources. And from the passage it is clear that this was the first time that he was going to give or provide a report to the manager of this nature. You see he was trusted. A lot of confidence was placed in this manager by his master. And so he was left to handle the resources in his own way. The chickens have come home to roost. His sin was now in public space. He was exposed. And his whole life was now in full view. His job was threatened and no wonder his cry was one of desperation. I cannot dig. I cannot beg. He knew that he was now about to become homeless. And the irony in the story is that he had wealth. He handled the resources of his master being in this position, he should at least have secured somewhere to lay his head after retirement. But whoa, he was faced in a situation where he would be outside. And so brothers and sisters, those who are listening, when our backs are against the wall, because of stubbornness, unfaithfulness, infidelity. If we try to solve this problem on our own, we will not find suitable solutions. We will rather go deeper in the hole. 
This order to give an account was not to protect his job. The order was not given to save his job, but for confirmation to relieve him of the position. There is an important lesson in this order for those who are in the church. Those who are listening. Those who are in the church and who are taking things for granted. The Spirit of the Lord will not always strive with men. And so this manager thought he could not be replaced. And in respect of what he was doing, he thought he was on the right path. And there are members for years, they attend church, they come to church, and they are not on the right path. The order this evening is that God will not always give us the chance. And so this unfaithful steward was asked to give an account of his stewardship. Bring the books to me. Let me see the records. Let me see the transactions. And what is also interesting in the case Unlike today, when someone is fired, he's asked to clear his desk, turn over the company's keys for the car and for the office. This manager was given some more time. And so in the parable, it is explaining that Jesus is not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. This unfaithful steward got a little more time to do what was right. As I've said in the normal course of things, the offender would be relieved. He would be fired instantly. But this culprit was given additional time to change his ways. But he continued on the same path and did more damage to his master. Most of the parables that Jesus used to convey his messages were people with good influences. But here we have a parable with characters with bad influences. And I want to inform you this evening that Jesus was not highlighting the bad behavior of these characters. In the parable, Jesus was addressing his disciples about the dangers of handling resources and that they do not belong to them and that they should use these resources to bring honor and glory to the master. But the parable was also directed to another set who were among the audience. The Pharisees who were lovers of money were also the target of the parable. In a way, they were like this unfaithful steward. Their behavior and practice and lifestyle, similar to that of the unfaithful steward. So Jesus wanted them to know that good living was a requirement for the entrance to the kingdom of God. They didn't like it. As the passage indicated, they ridiculed Jesus after the parable was given. Listen to this, my brothers and sisters. In this parable, Jesus was telling the audience, one, that all of us shortly will be discharged from our stewardship in this world. We must not always enjoy those things which we now enjoy. Death will come and dismiss us from our stewardship. Will deprive us of the abilities and opportunities we now have doing good. And others will come in our place and have the same. Our current experience 
from last year in this country, we would have seen and we would have heard of the number of people who have been relieved of their stewardship. And that our discharge from our stewardship at death is just. No one can complain when we are discharged from our stewardship at death. And because we might not be fortunate as this unfaithful steward to be given additional time, we might be hit right now. And so it's important that we use the resources to honor and glorify our Savior. That our discharge from our stewardship at death is just. And what we have de deserved, for we have wasted our Lord's goods, and therefore fortified our trust, forfeited our trust. We cannot complain of any wrong done to us. We have been given enough time. And thirdly, that when our stewardship is taken from us, we must give an account of it to our Lord. After death is a judgment, we are warned about the discharge of stewardship and the account of our stewardship. Well, what is dangerous in the parable is that some of us may not have the time to respond. Like the unjust steward of some of us may not be given any extra time to contemplate. We might not be given extra time to plan. And for Adventist people who are listening, we are aware of the 2,300 days prophecy and what our mediator is currently doing in the sanctuary and that names are being reviewed. It is therefore important that we take our stewardship seriously. None of us will know when our name is being revealed. And so once we are alive, once it is today, we must make our calling an election sure. We must. We must do what is right. We must take this important matter out of the parable of this unjust steward seriously. Jesus is asking all of us for an account of our stewardship. Currently, he's pleading to Israel. Why won't you change? Why won't you walk in the straight path? That is the plea. When we do it our own way, that will not lead to good living. When we do it our own way, we will compromise the account. When we do it our own way, we will falsify the account. When we do it our own way, we will make bad decisions. When we do it our own way, we will thwart the establishment. And when we do it our own way, like this unjust steward, we will compromise the principles of the church. And so with this unfaithful steward, he got to the point when he had to confront himself. He had to confront himself because he was now in trouble. And so the big question that he asked himself, what shall I do now? 
And there are many times we are in our respective corners and we are faced with the same question. What shall we do now? But I want to quickly remind you that as Israel, we are told that we are the apple of his eye. We are also told that he will never leave us alone. And so whenever we are in our darkest moments, remember that Jesus is there with you. He said, I will walk with you through the valley of death. That is comforting. That is comforting to believers and especially in this harbor time. These questions will haunt us. But I must inform you that from the beginning of the world, Christ has been there for his people. And so there's a word in the English language, soliloque, meaning one is questioning himself. What shall I do? His whole life appeared before him. He was facing homelessness and poverty. He knew that people would laugh at him. And so a plan was necessary. And so my brothers and sisters, this question will face us. And so at no time we are to allow the enemy to draw or lead us down the wrong path. There are many answers out there. Many answers to this question, what shall I do? And so many of our people in the world, in the church, in the country, they have responded to the wrong answers. He planned. This was his latest plot. And of course, he was successful. He lowered the debts of his master's debtors for his own benefit. And so he made friends with his enemies. And so when he was discharged, it is said in the parable that his friends would take him home. His friends would care for him. But I must say to you, brothers and sisters, when we are devising unscrupulous ways to get ourselves out of trouble, this is not the Christian way. The Christian must rely on the Lord to take him or her out of trouble. This unjust steward went down the wrong path. And in so doing, the literature said he was praised by his master. And so how could you be robbing your master and then he turn around to praise you? There's a text, there's a verse in the passage concerning the sons of men versus the sons of light. And so what Jesus was saying here is that the sons of the enemy, they are more skillful and shrewd in these things. More than the sons of light. The sons of light must never be engaged in decision making that will bring down people. The Christian business people must never be engaged in activities that will bring down one another, be they Christians or non-Christians. We are stewards, and as such, 
Our dealings must be above the board. Our dealings must be fear. The literature said the Lord, the Master, commended this thing. He had courage. Christ would not have praised a criminal. And so you look at this story and you are wondering if the master was doing the same thing as his manager. Jesus was not commending this shifty steward. But the master in the story. Bear in mind also that the steward is not praised for his dishonesty. But he was praised for his insight. Yes, he knew he was going to be homeless. No money in the bank. Friends would disappear. And so he was insightful. The point I want to make to believers, you can't fold up your hands. What your hands find to do legally, you are to do it so that when rainy days arrive, if you are to lose your job, Something is there for you to rely on. After all, Christ said that Christians are to be the head and not the tail. And there is a story in the Old Testament concerning the smallest creatures. There is an advice. O thou sluggard, go and consider the ways of the ant. There is no master around them. But they are so organized that they gather food for the winter. This unfaithful steward was found wanting. After all, he lived a lavish life. He squandered the master's resources. Like the prodigal son, he went out. But the difference with both is that one said, I am going to go back to my father. While the other chose the wrong path. My Christian believers, we must recognize that as a people, we are stewards. We are stewards and as such we are to manage the resources given to us well. We must do that. This steward got an opportunity to represent his master. All of us as Christians, that is why we are called we are called to be co-laborers. We are not called to act on one's self. We are called to work for Jesus. As we labor, as we continue to wait for the second coming of Jesus Christ, as watchmen, we must be faithful. Oh brother, be faithful. Soon Jesus will come. And when Christ arrived in the eastern sky, there will be no time for us to give an account. In Revelation, the massive declaration, he that is filthy, will remain filthy. There is no time for us to change. Now is the acceptable time. And while 
the investigative judgment is going on, it is our duty to make our an election call. It is our duty to make our calling sure. And as you ponder the parable, as you ponder this parable about the unjust steward, let me remind you let me remind you that our association, our association with one another must be so spirit-filled that they will see Jesus. They will see that we are stewards of the heavenly king. We must not by any chance allow the devil to cause us to act inappropriately. We must be sons of light. In the parable, this phrase describes believers, those who are righteous by the grace through faith. And so as we tarry, as we wait for the second coming, let us be reminded that time will not last. Some of us may not even give a second chance to give an account. We must remember that it is now. Now and not tomorrow. And if Jesus should call on us now by death or by the second coming, all is our account. God bless you. I'm just a little flower, hair I'm blooming by this rock. Sometimes I feel so lonely in this isolated spot. But living in the valley where he's placed me here to grow, I try to do my best for him. He sees me now, I know. Yes, God is in the shadows, in the valley there below. He sees one tiny flower as its beauty softly glows. He never fails one tiny, tiny detail he controls. Yes, God is in the shadows. He is everywhere I go. He gives me morning sunshine and the cool and gentle rain. He softly smiles upon me as I spend a few short days. He loves me as he made me. He's a loving heavenly king. I'm never all alone. He is always watching me. Yes, God is in the shadows, in the valley here below. He sees one tiny flower as its beauty softly glows. He never fails one time, each tiny detail he controls. Yes, God is in the shadows, he is everywhere I go. Yes, God is in the shadows, in the valley here below. He sees one tiny flower. As its beauty softly glows, he never fails.
was one time each tiny detail he controls yes god is in the shadows he is everywhere i go i know god is in the shadows he is So my brothers and sisters, on behalf of the Seventh-day Adventist Church Kings, we want to thank you, especially if you're not a member of our congregation, we want to thank you for joining us and for choosing us and for inviting us into your home and rolling out the red carpet to us. The COVID-19 in Jamaica is uh, becoming stressful because the numbers are increasing and the minister says that we are now in the community spread. Um, and so the strictures of the COVID protocol are being observed and are being manned. And so individuals who used to be able to come with us are no longer with us um, because they travel by public transportation and reducing their, their exposure. And so we want to wish them well. We want to thank those of you who have been following us um, since the original closure. We are halfway up now. And we thank those who continue to come and those who have continued to support the church. Um, with the 50% with the, with the, the or 35 or 40% that we have now, you will understand that our income has dropped significantly, but our expenses remain constant because we still have to keep the operations going and we still have to do things like these. And so our expenses remain constant and especially for the assembly, we have to get stuff, uh, sanitizers and temperature machines and all kinds of stuff. And so we thank those of you who have been contributing to us and those who have been promising to contribute. We want you to know that we need your help and we would appreciate it. I have a friend who tells me to keep my fingers crossed and I'm, 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 class, I'm crossing my fingers, my friend. He said, Brother Robert, that he is contemplating donating a camera to us. So I should keep my fingers crossed. So I'm not uncrossing them, I'm crossing them. But I'm crossing these two with the hope that others like him will join us so that we can give the, 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 the winds a mighty voice and we can tell men that the coming of the master draweth nigh. So please feel free to contact us. Our address is um, King Seventh-day Adventist Church, PO Box 176, uh, Montego Bay, PO 1, St. James, Jamaica, West Indies. And whatever you can contribute to us, we would appreciate it because that also will help us. And um, every little make uh, uh, the step toward much easier. Thank you. Continue to pray for us. And God bless you.